You're listening to Business Talk Radio, where we take business to the next level. Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline connects you with experts from all over the world to help you take charge of your career, your business, and your life. Wrap along with us. Visit drjacqueline.com to learn how to become a guest or a sponsor. And now, the doctor is in. Hello and welcome, or maybe it's welcome back. We've been broadcasting all day today and we love having you here. You are watching Rapping with Dr. Jacqueline presents A Better You. Lessons from the best coaches, consultants, and trusted advisors, a team of people I have handpicked myself with these hands. Yes, these people are experts from around the world in their industry, in their field. And they come on our program and share their expertise in a 15-minute lesson. In case you were looking for an interview show today, no, this is our presentation platform. You will be educated, you will be delighted, and you definitely will be changed by watching the program. I am your host, executive producer, director, and broadcast engineer, and my expert presenters from my team today joining me are Mariska Dupree from New Zealand. I love saying that. New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> and joining us from <laughs> it is Hyatt Ives. Hello, master of grammar, all things English and grammar. And Ricky McHealthy McKenna joining us from Houston. Your first time. Welcome, Ricky, in the house. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It is a delight to have you here. And as you know, how much I think of all of you because you really are exceptional at what you do. So I'm so glad that. Our lives brought us together, whether it was through an introduction or taking a course, but here we are, and I'm looking forward to the gems that you're going to drop for our audience today. As always, I'm going to spotlight you each, and please just tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and what we can expect to hear from you today, starting with you, Mariska. Ooh, I'm first. Okay, so I'm Mariska Dupria, and as you know, Jacqueline loves saying it, from New Zealand. <laughs> Uh, today we will continue on our journey with mindset and we will do a little bit of an exercise that might help you change your mindset. Um, I'm also very excited to let you guys know that me and my fellow coach Kira is going to have our next um, workshop in July. So that's coming up too so uh, for those of you guys that cannot read the banner that we have at the bottom um, if you let me know that you heard of the workshop from the show of Jack Dr. Jacqueline you will get 10% discount so there's a something extra in it for you so, yay yay thank you so much and Kira is also a fabulous coach I know her as well so Mm -hmm. Please do sign up for the workshop. Mr. Hyatt Ives, let's spotlight you. Tell us all about you and what you do. Thank you, Dr. Jacqueline. I am Hyatt Ives. I, my father was career military. We spent four years in the UK, and I spent four years in the British school system. As an underclassman, I won an all-school essay contest. And several years later, I said, well, if the British Jesuits can recognize my writing ability, perhaps I ought to hone it and expand it, <laughs> which is what I have done. And today we will be looking at some elements of English grammar. So that's it in a oh. nutshell. Back to you, doctor. I do love it. Hi, as you know, I told you my mom and I are glued to the TV downstairs watching your lessons, taking notes. She's like, yes, he's right about that. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll look forward to that later this evening that's when great. we watch and Ricky McHealthy McKenna, I'm going to spotlight you. Do tell. Thank you so much, Dr. Jacqueline. Yeah, uh, I am Ricky McKenna, have been that way for a long time. <laughs> and I am a certified nutritionist, a coach, uh, a mom, grandma, chef. I am known as the turquoise chef, and officially I have my chef coat on. Oh, very nice. And I do help people understand what food is and what it does since we all have to eat. I've decided, and we all should know, that 
Um, food really is the medium through which we gain our health, we gain wealth, and we become uh, better people through eating the right kinds of food. And I am on a, another site called Patreon. And if you sign up there and you'll support me and the shows and you'll get my free ebook, which has 19 different foods and recipes. So, and we'll go further today talking about what water means to you. Ah, that's a good one because I know people, mm -hmm. someone downstairs who doesn't want to drink water at all. <laughs> <laughs> that yep. e that e is, worth, is worth getting. I have. I am the recipient of it, and we've done some of the recipes, and they are superb. Thank you, Hyatt. Thank you. Thank you. So, Mariska, you have graciously mm -hmm. offered to go first. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Right. I'm going to spotlight you, put up your deck, and mm -hmm. the rest of us are going to out. We're going to be leaving. All right. There you go. Voila. There you go. And then I just need my timer. Okay. So today we are talking about changing our mindset. We've been doing this now for the last couple of weeks. Um, for the guys that has missed it, you can get it on YouTube um, on Dr. Jacqueline's show. So for today, we're going to look at how to change our mind mindset and do a little bit of an exercise. So this is going to be fun. So we will firstly look at where we can use this exercise, um, places that it would be helpful for us to use it in, and then we will go into the exercise. Okay, so places where you can use this or times or situations we're in you can use this exercise um, would be anytime you want to be more creative more innovative really just get those brain juices flowing and get into the zone so to speak um, another time that you might want to use this is when you're a little bit overwhelmed and you feel that your brain isn't quite working the way it's supposed to work and you feel a little bit stuck, this is a good exercise for that, those times, periods too. And then going into meetings, um, we have those meetings that's really, really important and gets the uh, all the body juices sort of going and we can frame it as nervous or excited depending on where you are in your mindset at that point in time but this is also a good exercise to ground us just make us calm and present and actually move our brain from a disrupted way of thinking to a more clear and concise way of thinking and then lastly when we are under stress so if there's any stressful situation that's going on or anything that stresses you out a little bit, um, might even make you feel a little bit anxious, this is a great exercise for that. Now, as we said with all our other work in mindset, brain cells that fire together, wire together. So this exercise you do want to do more than once like going to the gym or eating healthy it doesn't help if you just do it once right so we want to be able to repeat it the more we repeat it the easier it becomes for us and instead of taking a long time for us to focus on it our brain switches to the, the place where we want it to way way faster so doing this exercise more regularly um, if you can, a couple of times a day, it's really fun, it's easy, and you can just do a wee little small part of it, or you can do the whole thing, depending on the time that you have. And you can do it throughout your day, no matter where you are. So there's going to be elements within the exercise that you could really use in any situation in your life. 
So, without further ado, we will start with the exercise. So you will see if you have the visual part of this, um, on our slide, we have wee little blocks. Now, if you're only listening to this on audio, what I want you to do is to look at something in front of you and really, really concentrate on whatever it is that you're looking at. So if it is your keyboard or if it, you are outside and walking, it might be um, leaves on a tree or pieces in a park, whatever it is that you're looking at, I want you to really concentrate and look at that thing in a way that you will be able to reproduce that. So I want you to concentrate on the shades, the different colors, the way that it is shaped, really, really concentrate on each and every element and see all the small, small details that you will need to be able to reproduce that specific picture that you have in front of you. How will you be able to, to draw in the depth of the, the picture, making it look more three-dimensional? How will you go about shading that picture? Really look at it with intensity. So the next thing that we will do, um, if you are able to close your eyes, and this is only if it is safe for you to close your eyes, you can do so. If it's not safe for you to close your eyes because you are moving and in control of the movement, so behind the wheel of a car or busy walking somewhere or running somewhere, um, you can just diffuse your vision a little bit. And then I want you to listen to your surroundings. Listen to what is, what is in your surroundings. What are you hearing? So is there birds in the vicinity? Are you hearing traffic going by? Maybe you're in a building and you can hear the air conditioning. Or you, you hear a lot of chatter for the people around you. What is it that you're hearing? And now listen to the furthest sound that you can hear. What's the sound that you hear that's the furthest away from you? Now that you have identified that sound, what's the sound the closest to you? Can you hear your own breathing? Or maybe you can even hear your heartbeat if you concentrate really, really hard. Now the next thing that we will do by keeping our eyes closed or diffused, your vision diffused, I want you to feel something in your vicinity though. This might be a piece of paper, this might be your desk, um, might be your keyboard in front of you, might be your phone, might even just be the shirt or jacket or pants that you are wearing. Really feel it, feel the texture, feel the little bumps in it. Is it warm to the touch or is it cold? Really, really get the sense of the feeling whatever it is that you're touching at the moment. 
Does it have a smooth surface? And you can move your fingers around a little bit. So you can really, really get all the sensations of what you're feeling. And then next, what I want you to do is I want you to concentrate on your breathing. And when you think about your breathing, I want you to concentrate on the air going into your nostrils and feeling it going down into your lungs. Experience all the sensations of that air. When it goes in and when it goes out, what temperature is the air? How does it feel when the air goes into your nostrils, tickling along its route into your lungs? And then when you're breathing out, what temperature is the air then? How does it feel when the air flows over the top of your lip? Is it a little bit more wet than it was when it went in? Is it a little bit warmer? Really concentrate on your breathing. And then the very, very last thing I want you to do is I want you, if you're standing or walking or sitting, I want you to really Sense your feet. And see whether you can locate your toes. You can even wiggle your toes a little bit if you need to do that to locate them. See whether you can locate all your toes. How does the sides of your feet feel like? Really feel them. Now feel the back of your foot where your heel is. How does that feel like? Now sense the middle part of your foot where it's nice and soft. How does that feel against your shoe or your socks or the ground where you're sitting? Really experience that feeling. Now when you're ready and you've had your eyes closed, you can open your eyes. And of course, if you didn't have your eyes closed, that's not a problem. You can just look around you as you would normally do. So this exercise you can basically do at any point of time, wherever you are. And you can use any part of the exercise or you can do the whole entire exercise. And depending on what your modality is that you prefer, so some of us... Um, work better when we we look at things and some of us work better when we listen to things and some of us work better when we we feel and touch things or are a little bit more active so there's an element in there for each and everybody so you can use the one that you feel most comfortable with if you're not too sure try all of them and see which one you really enjoy the best and that can sort of become your go-to 
And normally it doesn't matter whether you're feeling your feet or maybe you feel your, your cup of coffee or tea in your hands and you, you feel the temperature. The rule for this exercise is that you do it for about three breaths. So three breaths would count for one exercise. So we did this for about 10 minutes. So we did about 36 exercises now, just during this time. And the more exercise you can do, the better your brain will remember how to place yourself into this more creative, innovative space of thinking that just enables us to make it so much clearer for ourselves when we're going through life. And it helps us too, whenever we're in a stressful situation, to get ourselves into a better frame of mind in order for us to solve those problems that life throws at us. And that is our exercise for today. It felt like a, a guided meditation. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it can have that quality to it, yes. Yes. Yeah. You set me up I, great for my presentation. I'm totally relaxed, ready to rock and roll. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I've set you up for success. Yes. Yeah. And normally we have a lot of time to, to go back and forth, but today, because there's three presenters, we don't. But I just want to let you know, you did a great job, and I love those those periods of silence where you don't say anything and people get uncomfortable and they've got to deal with whatever's coming up for them. So well done. We are going to take a break and hear from some of our sponsors and hi, we are on to you. Will you be ready? I already know that answer. Okay. Here we go. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Have you just lost your job or have been laid off and you are looking to transition to a new job or career? Maybe you have even tried submitting tons of applications, and yet you keep getting turned down for jobs you qualify for. Don't wait until you become overwhelmed with rejections when you can easily transition or get your dream job. Let MJW Careers guide you to the right career path and a better, brighter future. At MJW Careers, we know what hiring managers are looking for, and our goal is to land you the job you deserve. What makes MJW Careers a wonderful provider over other services is our pragmatic and scientific approach to resume writing. There are rules, there are visual cues, there are content best practices. We understand those and work within the boundaries to ensure our clients' messaging appeals to the decision makers. Our career consultants will help you transition into new roles quickly and effectively. With our experience in virtually every industry, we will provide direction in the frustrating job market by helping you write a customized, professional resume and prepare you for your interview as well. Join the great number of people we have helped scale up to greater things in their careers. Let us help you on your career journey. Come visit us, www.jobstickers.com to learn more and grab a free resume review or ebook. The session that we had with BCAT was really entertaining and enlightening. We were able to put together some very specific steps that we as individuals can take and it was really fun to all come together and see sort of where we're going as a team and how we can all get there together. We had a tremendous experience with the BCAT partners. One of the challenges that we have as an organization is to make sure that we have the right people in the right chairs doing the right thing. To do that well, you have to have synergy. You can try to dream up ways to make sure that your group does that, or you can rely on experts. We would recommend BCAP Partners to anybody who's looking to take their organization to the next level. You're listening to Business Talk Radio, where we take business to the next level. Hello and welcome back. We are glad that you're here. You're watching Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline presents 
a better you lessons from the best here they are i can't find them there <laughs> the best coaches consultants and trust advisors. and if you missed the beginning of the show you want to hop over to our youtube channel afterwards dr jacqueline llc i'm here with three of my expert presenters on my team mariska ricky and hyatt mariska just gave her a presentation and now we're over to hyatt who is here to present yet another lesson he shared with us so far the influence of uh, Chinese, French, Spanish, and Latin. And so today he's going to share with us actually about our own English language and some tips for us to speak more with more authority of, the, of knowledge of the language, correct? All right. I'm putting the rest of us backstage. Have a great presentation. Hi. Thank you, ma'am. All right, here we go. English grammar, parts of speech and related phrases. We're gonna start with a couple of questions. Our first question is, what are the five principal parts of speech? What are the five principal parts of speech? If you say nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, and prepositions, you are absolutely correct. What are some of the ways to enhance these parts of speech? What are some of the ways to enhance these parts of speech? Well, if you say, explore phrases involving each of these primary parts of speech, then you're, again, absolutely correct. So we're gonna start with what is grammar? What is grammar? Grammar is the sense system of any or a language. It's the system of our English language and is the system of any foreign language. So grammar is the system of a language. Language starts by people making sounds which evolve into words, phrases, and sentences. Those of you that have small children or small grandchildren, I have a two-year-old grandson. And in the past two years, I have seen him go from cry to grunt, to grunt and point, to word, to multiple words. He's not quite to sentences yet, but he is growing in his use of the English language. All commonly spoken languages are fluid and evolve over time. Just as <clears throat> the individual uh, vocabulary evolves over time, Languages evolve over time. And what we call grammar is simply a, a reflection of a language at a particular time. And of course, Jacqueline mentioned the four languages I've covered. One, of course, is a dead language. Latin is no longer spoken. Is it influential in English and in other languages? Very much so. It just happens not to be spoken anymore. So do we need grammar? Do we need grammar? Well, in short, no. You know, very many people in the world speak their own native language without having studied its grammar. So no, you don't need grammar. That being said, when you are serious about learning any language, the long answer is, yeah, you do need to know the grammar of that language. Grammar can help you learn a language more quickly and more efficiently. So let us proceed. We're gonna address the five main parts of speech and their modifiers and the modifiers thereof. The nouns, uh, of course, the first part is, first one is nouns. Nouns represent people, you know, Joe, Harry, Sue, Frank, places here, there, London, Sydney, New Zealand, and things, ball, bat. Noun phrases are a group of words built around a single noun. So examples of that are all animals. Animals is the noun. All animals is the noun phrase. Who ate the last sandwich? Well, sandwich is obviously the noun. It could be the last sandwich, 
the roast beef sandwich, the hot sandwich. And then passengers with small children can board now. Well, can board now is the phrase passengers and, you know, passengers with first class boarding passes, passengers with whatever. That's the noun phrase. Okay, now we go to verbs. Verbs are king in English. That being said, the shortest sentence contains a verb. You have to have a verb in a sentence. In fact, the shortest sentence you can make is a one word sentence. And guess what? It's a verb. Stop, go, halt. Verb, one word. You are unable to make a one, you are unable to make a one word sentence with any other type of word. The only word, one word sentence is a verb word. All right, you've got two types of verbs, action verbs, expressing what is happening. Ron plays ball, football, or a state verb, expressing a situation. Anthony seems kind. Sue seems melancholy. The verb phrase around these verbs uh, are called verb groups, consisting of a main verb and auxiliary verbs. Some examples of this are we started to work at eight at nine o'clock this morning. So started work this morning or started at nine o'clock this morning. We've been working since. So two verbs put together verb phrase. I am going to France next week. Going to France. I am. I am going to France next week or New Zealand. It is being repaired as we speak. It is being. It is repaired. It is being repaired as we speak. Now we go to adjectives. An adjective in a word uh, is a word that tells us more about a noun. Adjectives reference nouns. Big, red, expensive. Adjective phrases can be a single adjective or a group of words built around a single noun. Some examples of this are... He has clever ideas. He has weird ideas. He has funny ideas. They're all modifiers to the noun idea, ideas. It is a very big meal. It was a very big meal. It was a meal. It was very big, very small, very hot, very cold. Modifiers to the noun meal. The students were bored with a poorly produced film with the poorly acted film, with the poorly whatever, or, or with the excellently produced fi film. Those are the qualifying adjectives to the noun film. Adverbs. These tell us more about verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. An adverb phrase can be a single adverb or a group of words built around a single verb. Please do it now. Please do it. Now, tomorrow, soon, later. He spoke. Okay, he spoke what? Very softly, very loudly. Not too, not, not loudly enough. Again, qualifiers to the verb spoke. They did it. They did it as fast as possible, slower than they should have, much better than they could have, whatever. Modifying the verb, doing it. Finally, we have prepositions. A preposition expresses the relationship of a noun or a pronoun to another word. We have some examples of that being, they are, they are arguing about money. What are they arguing? They're arguing about money. The window, the window was what? The window was behind a large brown sofa. They resumed their meeting. Okay, they resumed their meeting, what? After an unusually large meal. So those are the prepositional phrases relative to the main sentence. So in review, we have noun phrases, a red box, verb phrases, will go. An adjective phrase, quite big, quite big box. 
adverb phrase. Very slowly. We will go very slowly. And a prepositional phrase. We will go very slowly in the car. There's some other word phrases that uh, can mean uh, uh, any short group of words uh, or expressions typical of idioms, such as piece of cake, a piece of cake. Well, that's, of course, literal. You can have a piece of chocolate cake or, you know, this is so easy, it's a piece of cake. Back to square one. Well, that means back to the start. Now, there is no square that has the number one on it, but back to square one means start all over again. And then, of course, caught red-handed. You know, caught with the evidence. Caught doing something you're not supposed to be doing. So in review, we've looked at nouns and noun phrases, verbs, verb phrases, adjectives, adjective phrases, adverbs, and prepositions. We even threw in some other word phrases. Going forward from here, there's much more we can cover in specific categories, specific examples, and in specific uh, grammatical applications. All of you out there can have access to That Ain't Not Right, The Use and Abuse of, my, of the English Language, the first book I wrote as a result of winning that contest in the British school system. It took me 20 years afterwards to, to make it happen, but that was the genesis of all of this that we're doing right now. You also can join the That Ain't Not Right, Use and Abuse of the English Language opt-in weekly email team. Go to my website, hyatives.com, to receive your copy. And with that, I will return control to Dr. Jacqueline. Racing down to get Ricky. Coming for you, Ricky. I'm here. <laughs> nice presentation, Hyatt and Mariska. Very okay. good. I always love getting new information, or, you know, I shouldn't say new, but information that you let go into the cobwebs of your brain, right? That you, you learned so many years ago and you forget and how important it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People will judge you on how you speak. Oh, yes. Yep. So, okay. fantastic. Huh? Excellent. Well done. Uh, we are going to take a quick break before we come back, Ricky, so you have a, a few more it's just to, to sit okay. there and it's going to be a short break i promise you we'll be right back okay. stay with us. hi my name is zane carson crew and i'm the author of this book the world's first tooth fairy ever reading is magic studies have shown that reading to your children lays the foundation for greater success in life Reading helps develop language and vocabulary skills. It helps improve memory, and it encourages curiosity and inspires creativity. The benefits are immeasurable, and as a parent, you'll benefit too. In only 10 or 15 minutes a day, you'll be creating more memories and a bonding experience that will last for years to come. So take time to read to your children. Read them books about things that engage and interest them. Tales of fairies and magic fascinate children, and as everyone knows, the Tooth Fairy is at the top of the list. If your child loves magic, wands, adventure, and what child doesn't, you'll love reading them books from the trademarked series The World's First Tooth Fairy Ever. Follow along as Abella, the world's first tooth fairy, accidentally starts the tooth fairy tradition. Learn the tricks of being a professional tooth fairy in the book Abella Starts a Tooth Fairy School. Your child's imagination will soar as you read the adventures of Abella and her magic wand. These wonderful books are available at worldsfirsttoothfairy.com and at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Walmart.
stations are tuned in to. You're listening to Business Talk Radio, where we take business to the next level. Welcome back again. We are so happy to have you here. You are watching Rapping with Dr. Jacqueline presents A Better You, lessons from the best coaches, consultants, and trusted advisors. I just love saying that because I'm surrounded by such talent. I'm so honored and lucky. We just had two mind-blowing presentations, and now Ricky McKelvey McKenna is going to lead us through hers. So, Ricky, I'm going to spotlight you and put your presentation up, and the rest of us will wait backstage. Thank you, Dr. Jacqueline. There we go. All right. Well, today we're going to be talking about something called hydration. And it doesn't mean just watering your plants. It means watering you, watering your body and your brain. And I thought I'd start with a couple of questions and then we'll answer them. First of all, what does hydrate mean? And we'll figure out what that means. And then what are five things that water does in your body among a lot more. And then does the brain need water? Hmm, wonder about that. And can water help with toxicity? I know all of us have heard the words toxins, toxicity, and wondering what the heck those things are. And then in this particular presentation, how do you know that you're dehydrated? If you are dehydrated, and how do you know? So that's where we're going to start. And why? Because as a certified nutritionist, I run across a lot of people who don't drink water. And even Dr. Jacqueline knows some of those people. So get your glass of water ready. Have it handy. And take a drink. Okay. Now that you've had your sip, why? Why have you done that? Let's see if we can get this up to where it is. Um, I want to see what I can do here about making this bigger. All right. There we go. And now how do I get back to my <laughs> part? Uh, let's see. Okay, Dr. Jacqueline, I need a little help here. This Hi, I, I, all you have to do is hit the, um, the button for full screen. I can't see it. That's really weird. Okay, well, we'll just, okay, wait a minute. Oh, just keep going. <laughs> we'll just keep we'll going. Okay, out. yeah. So what does, let's, let's go back here first. First of all, hydrate means to bring water, bring moisture to your body. Does everybody know what a grape looks like? It's full, it's got, it's, it's plump, and it's full of liquid. Well, your cells look like grapes when they're hydrated. And when they're not hydrated, they look more like raisins, which is not what you want. And so here's what you want. You want a full cell that looks almost like a donut, but it's not got a hole in the middle. And your body depends on water for survival. Every cell and tissue and organ in your body is connected. And they all need water. And it's kind of like an orchestra. I compare the body to an orchestra from the inside. And every organ and every cell represents a part of the orchestra. And when they're all working in harmony, and that's when you really feel good. Now, what about something like water retention? Well, I know a lot of people who have problems with that. So we talk to them about drinking more water. That's what helps it. Now, here's a hint. And you can see my little pal there taking a drink out of the stream. Do not wait to feel thirsty. Because hydration means that you want to keep those blood cells plumped up and full so that they can transport all the nu nutrition in through your body. So when you're feeling thirsty, you are probably already dehydrated and you don't want to get to that situation. One of the things that the water does is definitely feeds your brain. And if you look at the statistics here, 
your brain's about 73 to 80% water. So it's the fattest organ, fattiest organ in the body at at least 60%. So if someone, I always say to my clients, all right, drink the water, let's get your brain plumped up as well, as well as the rest of your body. And I don't mean it will plump your body, it will just plump the cells so they will transport the nutrients you need. And your brain needs water to really work well. And so I usually say, if somebody calls you a fathead, thank them. It's a squishy computer that interprets information and its functions include intelligence, creativity, emotions, memory, and our five senses, which everybody knows. So if you wanna see better, your eye also is a fluid organ and your eyes and the rest of your body absolutely needs to have water in order to function properly. And the brain does a few things that we all are concerned with, like thoughts, speech. And if you want to speak correctly, you really do need to hydrate your brain besides listening to Hyatt. Your body movements and all your organs and your responses to stress. This is the one that really gets me. Because breathing and digestion and heart rate all respond to stress. And hydration of the systems in your system, your whole body, is critical to these. This is something I work with with um, a bunch of people. Aging gracefully and toxicity, which we'll see in a minute, we were not designed to be sick. Our spirits are meant to be whole and healthy. And so our body needs to have signs, you know, something's out when, when you're not feeling well. It means something's out of balance. And so you think toxicity has something to do with the body. And if you notice my little friendly fish there, that's a toxic fish, obviously. And water helps to clear aching joints, bloating, high blood pressure, brain fog, depression, sluggishness, and it helps with diabetes, especially type 2 diabetes. These are all things that are considered toxic in your body. Now here's the dangers of, hydra of dehydration. Since water is constantly flowing through all your body, it circulates the food, all your vitamins and minerals. It takes care of, as I said, your eyes, keeping your eyes. If your eyes water, that's another problem. But there is, you must have the water in order for them to work properly. And if you've ever had dry eyes, you know how miserable that can feel. Okay, five things that water does in your body. It helps your body to, we'll go back to that one, circulate the food, circulate your vitamins and minerals, lubricates your joints, it helps you with waste remo removal, which is super important. You don't want to hold on to all those toxins. And sweating. Interestingly, today I spoke to um, a friend of mine who just finished a really difficult workout. And she said that she doesn't sweat. And that can be a sign of either your body absolutely must be absorbing all the water that you're drinking. Because she drinks as she goes through her workout. But what she said was, she doesn't sweat. And she, you know, she doesn't even glisten as a woman. But my thought is that her body must be sopping up all of that water that she's drinking. Because otherwise, here's some of the things that can happen. You can have little or no urine. And if there's somebody you know who doesn't like to use the restroom often, that's often what happens. If they're de they dehydrate and then they have a problem with that. You can have dry mouth, sleepiness, headache, confusion, and this one is not fun, dizziness or lightheaded feelings. Here's the one that gets me, depression, and then brain not sending signals for thirst. This is what happens in many cases. I work with a lot of seniors, and what I found is Part of the problems with something like dementia 
can be attributed in some cases to not drinking enough liquids. And therefore the medications that they're giving people are not working properly as well. So those are the things that water does for your body. And here's a few ideas about keeping water with you and drinking during the day. Um, my preference is to carry a steel or glass water bottle and also to get a filter on your kitchen faucet. It helps reduce the plastic gut. How many of us carry plastic water bottles around and buy the plastic water bottles in um, 24 packs or something like that? And I really feel as though putting a, um, a fairly good filter for your water on your kitchen faucet helps you reduce the cost of the water and it also helps you reduce the plastic glut. And, there, and most of us probably know how much goes on with that and the water that goes on. Add a slice of lemon, lime, or orange to your water. I often get, I don't like the taste of water. Well, guess what? Water's not supposed to have a taste. It's supposed to have a feel in your mouth and also to help lubricate the systems in your body. So add something like lemon, lime, or orange, put a little squeeze of that in there. And I know a lot of um, people have the water coolers where you'll, they'll put in limes, lemons, strawberries, and sometimes cucumbers, which are really good. And by the way, cucumbers are one of the best foods for hydrating. So grab a cucumber, never mind slicing it into your salad, just chomp on the thing and eat it. And drinking water before, during, and after any kind of exercise, whether you're doing a you know, workout in the gym, whether you're dancing, especially when you're singing and playing golf. When you think you're hungry, you might want to drink a glass of water first. And especially for those who um, feel as though their bodies are toxic and they want to start clearing things before you sit down and really set a great, sit down to a great meal, drink a glass of water first. It will satiate some of that hunger if it's really hunger. Sometimes it's just that you really need, your body is just calling for water. And drinking on a schedule, I suggest for people who are super busy, set your alarm, set your, um, your phone alarm, your watch alarm, whatever, and then order filtered waters when you're in a restaurant. And if you're having wine or whiskey or liquor or something, make sure you also have a side of water too. And that's most of what I have to show now. Let's see. There we go. Am I back on? <laughs> Where am Hello. I? Here you are. You're here. Yay. Here yeah. Here you are. And I You're really here. wanted to open it up for questions because there's just, do I have a little more time? You do have more time, but no one will be able to answer questions unless uh, they write in on social media. Oh, okay. Well, I just wanted to know everybody to know that um, this is, this is your savior, no matter where you are, you can put stuff in it. And I mentioned the other night to Richard, who is my significant other, I said, I think I need a drink and I'm not sure if I need a zeal or if I need a scotch, but I definitely would have the water. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it on helps. The day of the week. <laughs> yeah, and then the time of the day. And uh, seriously, no, to get back to it, nutritionally, water is your best bet for satiating thirst. As I said, you could put some, you know, lime, lemon, orange drops in it, however you want to do it. But drink your water and enjoy your water. And tell your friend who doesn't like water, Dr. Jacqueline, <laughs> to give it a try. <laughs> I, sometimes it's those closest to us that we can't really have an influence on. So. I hear you. <laughs> okay. I'm a huge advocate of water. Two and a half years ago, I gave up caffeine and everything else. I only drink two things. It never changes. Water and Chardonnay. That's it. Okay. Not, <laughs> not necessarily in that order. One in no. <laughs> No juice, no soda, no caffeine. Uh, yeah. So great. Soda, 
you so much. Soda is not a hydrator. Soda is so bad for you. Yes, um, it is. Okay. So I'm going to spotlight you each. And if you just give your contact information, Ricky, yours is still streaming. So let's start with you. What's okay. the best way for people to get in touch with you? Either by the email, Ricky at Ricky McKenna, or I'm a phone person. Please use the 970-618-7607. That is my cell phone. Um, if you text me on the phone, and usually if someone puts in either ebook or McHealthy, I'll know what it's about. So I won't think it's a spam call. Patreon is where I have my recipes and my lessons posted for my classes, my pan intuitive cooking, which is on on Thursdays at 11 o'clock central, 11 a.m. central time. And that's a good way to come in because it's very similar to this, but you can come in and it's, there's dialogue among the people in the audience and with myself in the kitchen. And you will get the recipes uh, from each lesson and my free ebook, which has 19 foods that are really great for you and that I recommend, and EWG recommends you um, buy organic. That's the, uh, it, it's a, a, a online, EWG.com. And they recommend the, the 19 foods and vegetables. They actually have what they call the dirty dozen, the vegetables that are overly um, sprayed with chemicals. You don't want to eat those. You want to eat them organic. So, as I said, Ricky at RickyMcKenna.com will get you there or Patreon. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jacqueline. Thank you, Ricky. We're going to go over to you, Mariska. Okay. So for me to contact me, you can get me on Mariska at journeytodiscover.com. I'll spell that for you guys. It's M-A-R-I-S-K-A -A at J-O-U-R-N-E-Y to the number two d i s c o v e r dot com and you have a special for your july workshop oh yes i do <laughs> sorry i forgot about that just now um and we have our july workshop coming up um, that me and kira is hosting and you guys have the opportunity to get 10 percent off uh, just quote that you heard of the workshop on Dr. Jacqueline's show. Thank you very much. And Mr. Hyatt Ives. I want to start with telling Mariska, I love my your English background when you were talking about we little small parts of it and we little blocks. Uh, it brought a smile <laughs> to my face. And you can see it up there, Hyatt at HyattIves.com. Hyatt sounds like the hotel to spell H-I-E-T-T, -T, Hyatt at HyattEyes.com. And like Ricky, that's my cell phone, and I, I love to be called. 832-372-6900. That's 832-372-6900. Back to you, doctor. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate you all being here today. I hope you have a lovely rest of your evening, morning, and I look forward to seeing you on the show. <laughs> thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye. It was a fabulous day today, and yesterday was also amazing. Tomorrow we've got some great shows. I'm just uh, looking to see if I can get you the names of the guests. But you can always go over to our website, drjacqueline.com. I try to keep everything simple. We will be going through a rebranding very soon, so things are going to change. But what will never change is that this is a platform for people to share their stories. And some of the stories that we've heard will touch you in, in a way you never could imagine. You're learning lessons. Hopefully, you're, you're getting entertainment value. And again, we're just thrilled that we are growing as much as we are. We will be changing up our schedule. I'm working with, um, with some of my coaches to make sure we're bringing you the most relevant content and that we 
do have some shows that have overlapping topics, so we're going to be taking a look at that. But we have a brand new show coming out next week with the famous Deborah Wooten. She's over in the UK. She's a, an executive producer. She's an animator. And we have a show that um, is around the 529 Club. So if you're on Facebook, go over and take a look at 529. It's a club for creatives. And Deborah's doing amazing things, helping bring up and coming talent into the world. So look for that on our schedule. Again, go over to drjacqueline.com and look at watch our shows. And if you want to be a guest or you want to be a presenter, go to book your session and sign up there. Thank you again for being here. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. We have eight shows tomorrow and uh, it's going to be a full day. So you don't want to miss it. All right. We'll talk to you again soon. Take care.